Uh oh. It's your boy. What is up, everybody? It's very good to be back. I won't lie. I was gone for a while. But that's okay, because now you get me for like almost seven days straight. At least that's the plan. I may take a break day at some point, but I'm planning on going straight through. I don't know how well that's going to work. Oh, crap. I got to check something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to make sure my last uh, stream actually uploaded to YouTube properly. Five days ago? Five days ago? I think that was five days ago. Uh, I think that's it. Hold on. I got to check it. Sorry. Hold, wait. Please don't leave. Oh, God. I'm messing everything up. It's okay. I'm just being a bit of a dork. Um, October 27th. That would have been five days ago, six days ago. So, yeah, uh, I'm all up to date on that, I think. Yes. Awesome. So now I can exit out of that. And we're back. What's up? So, as was stated earlier, I have to do one of these before I continue on. So we're going to do that really quick. Welcome to Rhyme. I reckon it might not seem like much to you, but to me, never mind. We'll save that conversation for after. Tracking down Dekaiasign is what matters now. Let's split up and tra uh, ask after the bastard. Better odds of turning up useful information that way, I'd wager. Now, there's... There's like a 70% chance that I actually can't finish this mission yet because I don't have this whole area unlocked. Hello. Oh my god. Dorks. Um, I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to finish this mission until I finish a little bit more of the MSQ. But I would rather work on it than not work on it so that I have here we go huh, what 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 do you want with me a scene the one that came and killed everyone oh god is he here and why are you talking about him oh I knew I should have stayed inside there's nothing but death out here now death and horror and eaters and okay uh, well then, on to our next victim. Next person who got the shit scared out of him? Are they behind this shit? Oh. Nope. Haha! -ha! Found you. Hello. Huh? Where did you come from? What do you want with me? The Kaya sign? That thrice damned eater that's been sp that's the spitting image of Gulgent uh, of a Gulgent knight? That the Kaya sign? Uh, I can't help you. All I know is that when he came, he wicked white. If you had seen the carnage, you would. I'm sorry. I can't talk about this. Okay. I was trying to open my soda, but, you know, I could go for the one-handed open. Eh. Where'd that bitch go? So I think I've determined I want to do all of these blue missions because I want to save all of the, uh, all of the darkness, that, uh, that darkness team. So what I think I'm going to do is because they're my highest level already. Um, hold on. 
There we go. Since they are my highest already, I'm going to go Dark Knight for uh, the tank one. I'm going to go Astro for the healing one. I'm going to go Samurai. Or, ooh, I could go Dancer, though, too, because Dancer is already higher. I'll go Dancer for the DPS, and I will go Black Mage for the uh, magical DPS. That way I can get them all done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Well, not anything worth sharing. I wish I could say I'm surprised, but I'm not. When we saw that day, what he did to us, there's no way we gone from that. What happened here? Well, I was planning on telling you the whole story eventually. But I suppose now is as good as any time. I was born and raised in right. Like any real prospect, I eked out a living as a hunter. Might have tried my hand at something more exciting had I not also been trying to prove for my love, uh, provide for the love of my life, Melinda. It was about a year ago when that she accepted a commission from the Yulmorian trader. The bloke dealt mostly in antiques, and he had this bracelet in need of restoration. Bloody old with a questionable provenance, but supposedly it once belonged to royalty or some such. The Fangs of Orthus, he called it. Me and her had been talking about trying to uh, try tying the proverbial knot, buying land, building a home, that sort of thing. Around here, that might not take much, but it was still a lot more than we had. So when the trader made his offer, she didn't hesitate to say yes. I'd gone down to the shipyards to pick up extra tools and materials she needed for the work, quality stuff, but it'd pay for itself ten times over. But when I got back to right. The Kaiasine had been busy. I spied at least a dozen newborn eaters fluttering about, trying to make sense of their new lot. The grandmother who lived next door and shared fruits from her orchard with us. The gruff woodsman who'd brought firewood to our doorstep in the dead of winter. Both of them reduced to mindless fiends. Just like that. There wasn't time to mourn or to think. I started looking for Melinda. And then she w there she was, alive and well. Our eyes met, and we knew it was going to be all right. We ran for each other, and... Even now, a year later, it doesn't feel real. One moment she was there, right there, in front of me. And the next she was... Dekai Sain knelt and took the fangs of Orthus, then left, leading a host of Sin Eaters out of right. But Melinda? I still couldn't see her as anything else. She wouldn't budge. She just hovered there and stared, waiting for me to... To, to end it. Well, I could never say no to her. Not once in the years we'd been together. For all the time she'd welcomed me home with a bowl of hot stew. All the time she laughed at my crude jokes and gave me counsel when I was losing my way. For all that and more, I killed her. I swore then and there I'd have my vengeance. De Kaiasine would die by my hand. I carved the scars into my flesh to mirror the ones he left on my soul. An enduring reminder of the vow I, that I never dare stray from the path. There. All done. No need to wallow in it. Wouldn't want my tragic yet trite tale to put you off a hunt. Still, me with, still with me to the end, sinner. Fuck yeah. That's the spirit. Still, I have some unfinished business here. So, if you'll give me a moment before we resume, I would be most grateful. Am I able to do this one? I am. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Sinner. I'm sure you're eager to get back to it, as am I. Trouble is, in your absence, I've failed to turn up any information as to the whereabouts of Dekaiasine. There is one line of inquiry I've yet to pursue, though. The Fangs of Orthus. 
the bracelet my beloved was supposed to restore and that the Eater took with him when he left right. Sin Eaters are mindless fiends, driven only by base instincts. Everyone knows that. They have no need for worldly possessions. Yet Dekaiasign took the bracelet anyway, which can only mean that there's something unique about this particular antique. Or the sinless bastard somehow different from the rest of his ilk. Either way, I think we need to learn more about the Fangs of Orthes. I know just the man to ask. The Yomorian trader who commissioned Melinda's services. Much as I'd like to question him myself, though, I don't think that's an option. Even though Dakaya signs attack a year ago is common knowledge, I doubt the trader will believe that an Eater stole his precious trinket. It's more likely to accuse me of theft and have me clapped in irons. So, I'm afraid you'll have to go in my set. Stead, Umbra. Melinda said he was a regular at the Beehive, so try looking for him there first. Nice. Hold on. That's a blue quest. Is that an ether current? Ow. I don't think this one's an ether current. No, 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 no. This one wasn't. Yeah. Alright, so I gotta go down the yaw. There's a fate nearby. Except at the moment, I don't really care. Oh, ow. Then after this, we're going to continue on with the MSQ. Do, 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 do. Oh man, we gotta go back this way. Cause there's no way, yeah, it's too steep. Mm -hmm. Let me actually turn the music down just a hair. Cause the music... Music seemed to be a little high in my ears. Which means it was probably a little high in the, in the capture. I've always got to adjust my sound settings because I'm neurotic about sound. I like to tweak everything. Ah. All right. Once again into the breach. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um Nope. There we go. So I got to go to the beehive. It's still up here, yeah? There it is, yep. 
<laughs> All right, where's this asshole? Hmm. And to what do I owe the pleasure that is your company? The fangs of Orthus, you say? Not very interesting. I should be glad to tell you everything that I know, under the assumption that you should recover it. You will see it return to its rightful owner at once. I purchased the bracelet from a traveling peddler who claimed it was a relic of Verbert, a glorious kingdom that fell with the flood like so many others. He spoke true, from what I could tell and I intend to sell to it, it to a collector to hear it for a tidy profit, after having it properly restored by an artisan in the right. Alas, she was one of several casualties of a sin to attack, during which the fangs of Orthus mysteriously vanished. I have, of course, been keeping in touch with several contacts, uh, on the off chance that the, thing might attempt, uh, that the thief might attempt to sell it. If not regrettably, but a piece of a similar design did recently surface in Maud's soak, I am told. I'm planning to dispatch an agent to investigate, but you seem more than capable of fulfilling that role. As for incentive, you may be assured that any information that aids me in the acquisition of the fangs of authors of s or similar relics will be well rewarded. Alright. See you later, asshole. I hate you more. I really do. No, this is zero. Tasted like a shit ton of vanilla. And what did our industrious patron have to say? So, he thinks it was stolen, eh? Just as well. We'd probably not know where to head next if it wasn't for his distrusting nature. If this piece of similar design is related to the fangs of Orthus, then it might attract Dekaiasine's attention. Assuming it hasn't already. Let's go. <sighs> ah, uh, meringue. Cost me a ton of gil to get the fuck around. Might have to do dungeon roulettes at some point to make some coin back. Granson. Fine weather we're having today in Mold Soak, isn't it? No such thing as a thing without value. It's the creed of these folks. We'll find no shortage of uh, Vobertite trinkets here. Finding the right one, on the other hand, is the challenge. I say divide and conquer as before. Okay. Hopefully I can find something of value. Hello. Yes, do you have business with me, traveler? It's a lady. Ah, the, uh, the Vobotite choker. Uh, is that what all this fuss is about? And you're in luck, for my husband has yet to sell it. Once we realized how valuable it was, though, he insisted on carrying it with him at all times. If you're not willing to wait for him to return, you could try to find him at the ruins where he's scavenging for relics. They're not far. Great. Zinzin! Well met, well met. How may I be of service to you? Oh-ho! A choker that once belonged to Vobertite royalty, you say? If only I had such a remarkable treasure in my possession. But no, I do not. In all of my years here, I have never even heard of someone unearthing such a thing. <sighs> Alright. I may have to turn down my input. It looks like I'm a little hot on the mic today. Hey, Granson. Good news, friend. Huh! To think it'd be that easy. You've the luck of the Fae. 
But we need to hurry. My theory's correct, and so long as the scavenger has the choker, he's a target for Takaya sign. So am I gonna fight him? Or... Oh, way over there? Hold on, where's uh where's the porter? Thank you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. What do we find? M mercy, mercy! There he is. Take whatever you want, but please don't kill me. I have a family. I. Please, I beg of you. I. Well, his magic works fast. Ah, he got away. Please, please. Sorry, bud. Shame you missed the fun. It's one bit off more than he could chew. Probably because it was a newborn. You can tell by the lingering vestiges of intelligence and self. You can see it in their eyes. Like when Dakai signed. Don't tell me. You saw him. Wicked White. And he took the choker too? Damn it. Damn it all. He can't keep getting away with it. Just like right. 
I was too late to save him. Just like I was too late to save her. But not again. Never again. I'll hunt you to the ends of the world, Dakaya Sign. Vengeance will be mine. <clears throat> right. Yes. Neither the time nor the place. More eaters could be about. It's just... Every time I cut one down, it reminds me of my first. Oh, so he's gonna go mope. Listen, I get it. He's free to be angry and upset. I understand. We may have failed to stop him this time, but what matters is that we both live to see another day. Pity the scavenger didn't. And the wife doesn't yet know she's become a widow. Sod it. I'll tell her what happened. I've been there. So maybe it'll help to find help me to find the right words. Not that there ever are any. Afterwards I'll have a good think about our next step. Don't don't let me keep you from your other affairs, Umbra. We'll speak again soon. Okay, so I gotta go continue this. See ya! Well, here we are. Yet the pixies are nowhere to be seen. Knowing them, their games have already begun. In which case, Umbra, there is a variety of plant native. To, uh, there is a variety of plant native to these parts with a distinctive furled tip. Looking grass is its name, so called because it can be used to spy pixies. Believe it or not, I'll explain how I know all of this later. But first, I need you to help me find some. Now, if a voice calls to you, under no circumstances should you respond. You will only suggest yourself to further mischief. So I need to find grass. God damn it, Brett. Nice try, Faye. I'm a D&D &D pro. Okay, no, that was 50. Great, I'm slow for a while. I take it you met with some trouble. Apologies for subjecting you to that. Can I assume from your presence that you managed to find us some looking grass? Yes, this is the stuff. Thus armed, we should be able to see through the Pixie's Veil of Invisibility. And seeing them is the first step to dealing with them. Come, let us gather everyone and put Uriange's little trick to good use. Thank God Beckon fell off, Jesus.
Prasita, Crocler. Sorry. Aww. Hey, with us. We have neither the time nor inclination to play. We have come to see Uriange. Oh yes, Uriange, the peculiar one. <laughs> Accurate. In return for a place in El Meg, he agreed to a riddle contest with us for seven days and seven nights without any sleep. <laughs> So much fun! We must do it again! I'm sure he'd be delighted. Now, if you'd be so kind as to lift your spell. Shall we? Should we? Would we? What now? I don't know. But this is their home, so we must indulge them. That you first lend us a helping hand, or two, or three. Once you've helped solve all of our troubles, we'll let you see Urian J. Pixie's honor. Well, there you have it. Pixie chores. I suggest we split up. Umbra's over here like, great! Oh, oh, look at me, look at me! I have a task for you! Lidoran is our beloved village and we want it to always look lovely. And it can't look lovely without flowers blooming. And no flowers bloom lovelier than ever blooms. Okay, so I gotta go plant some seeds. Go get some fruit. Ether current. Okay, so this was Verbert. 
At least that's what it sounds like. Interesting. Now that I find fascinating. There isn't a ton I'm like super invested in when it comes to like time wasty quests like this. But that does have my interest. Hmm. Perhaps I'll make a pretty curtains out of them. There's one. Our precious children are thirsty and need to bring water. Let's see what we have here. This place is like hard to look at. Get out of here. We're, we're going to do all of the missions back to back, so we just have to go talk to the quest givers again. There's no reason not to do it that way. Must have clicked by accident there. Okay, two down. <sighs> this area is so bright. I wonder what the, uh, light warden of this area looks like. Alright, we got this. Alright. 
so now I need to go back around and water the plants. And it's kind of a straight shot from here, so all right. Leafman. I wish I could up res this. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a mod that'll up res it. Um just bring the the resolution up a little bit more. But it probably also takes my computer's still a little uh, weak in terms of power. It's still quite young in terms of like its progress as a gaming PC. For instance, I need way more RAM. Okay, so they were trying to turn me into a pixie. But I am too strong for them. How about now? Yeah, here's your food, kid. So again, we see we see kind of the theme of stagnation. The pixies have like all this land and all this power, but they don't do anything with it. They just hide. No. <laughs> There's this guy. Hey, fella. Glad Ken is worried. Well, that's all well and good, but when someone tells me not to do something, it only makes me want to do it more. No one can stop me. <sighs> Great. Okay, so I gotta find him first. There we go. Squealing.
So your beaver speak is a bit rusty. The creature appears to want milk. However, you see no sign of Ken Gyuff. You resign yourself to the bearing the bad news to Lad Ken. Okay. Let's do this the easy way. You're back. Where's Ken Guff? Please tell me Ken Guff is okay. What? Against your warning, he went to Faisa Loran, where you found only a strange animal? Then the tales are true. Only Ken Guff. Why? Why did you listen? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I shouldn't assume the worst yet. Maybe there's still hope. I just, I just need to stay calm and think things through. Alright. Uh, Got that ether courage. Ugh. How goes it, Umbra? So a mix of menial tasks and pranks. Yes, that pretty much sums up my own experience. I have no troubles with worthy of the name. <sighs> How long are we supposed to keep at this? They're clearly playing with us. Indeed. Whenever I inquire how much more there is to be done, the answer is ever the same. A little. I doubt they have any intentions of releasing us in the near future. Brianche once told me a story about the Pixies. They're born from the souls of those who died as children, or so it's believed. Though they don't have memories of their previous lives, the desire to have fun remains, imprinted on their souls. And so they live only to play, keeping hapless mortals for their pleasure for years on end, sometimes even until death. Alize, hmm. In the past, when I sought to identify the true nature of ghosts, I came upon literature examining a similar subject. The soul was likened to a core that resided in the ether, and its presence is what differentiates us from such beings as spirits and arcane entities. Upon death, said core ordinarily dissipates along with the ether that composed the flesh. However, it may be held together and bound to, to the corporeal realm, either by the will of its owner or by means of certain arts. In time, the soul may regather ether unto itself to assume another form, or find newly emerged life in which to abide. The pixies may be one such instance of this. If ghosts are merely souls without bodies, what does that make us? I think you've become that which you fear most, brother dearest. However the pixies may have come into being, if we leave them to judge when they are satisfied, they will never be satisfied. Nay, we must negotiate new terms with the creatures. But where to begin? It seems to me we would need at least one among us to sympathize with us. In the course of your chores, did any of, the uh, did any of you encounter a pixie who seemed even faintly amenable to reason? What? You knew a pixie from before. Not only are you acquainted, but you entered into a pact? You might have mentioned this sooner. 
At any rate, I dare hope this will offer us a way out. Without further delay, then let us summon this fuel ool, please. Okay. Theo Wool. So, my sapling has finally remembered about her lovely branch. But with such a half hearted call, she may as well lop me off and cast me aside. I have no sapling. Okay, so please, comma, Theo, wool, comma, I need you. Is that in your idea of a fervent call? A sudden log could a sudden log could do it more with more fire. Oh, oh crap. Oh, loveliest of branches. Please grant me your sock or you're late 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 I've been waiting for you to summon me ever since you came here waiting and waiting and waiting wow my sapling didn't so much as utter my name. Such a heartless thing she is. Cold and cruel and heartless. Whoa. Calm down, bud. Another self-important little brat. Just what we need. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. All right, I'm sorry. It was a joke. Honestly, just a joke. But just now you called for me so earnestly, so fervently. I couldn't possibly stay angry at you. Sure about that? Very well. As your lovely branch, I will lend you my strength. For you to think of any new games, though, apparently. If I were you, I'd be bored of myself. Now, let me make something clear. That mortal is mine. No matter what you do, she'll never be yours. Never, never, ever! Oh, not even a bit. But what about the others? Surely we can keep them. No, no, no! You can't keep them either! They're for my amusement and mine alone! And if you lay so much as a finger on my sapling, I'll scatter the contents of her bag all over your precious village. There'll be cold, hard metal, furry, festering food, stinky, sweaty small clothes, and... And all manner of other terrible unmentionable things. How would you like that? Hmm? All right, all right. But will you not at least let us play with the twins? <laughs> Just while the others go and see Urianje. Aye, aye, that's all we ask. And we promise we'll play nice. Seems we won't be joining you. Ow. 
we'll reveal the hidden Fernick to you at once. Sarah is very pretty. Oh. So this is the true Ilmeg. How are you feeling? Better. I think I remember the way now. Apologies for the delay. Shall we go and see Orianje? Your lovely branch is useful, yes? So whenever you're in trouble, you must remember to make use of me! Oh, excuse me. There's this one. So we're gonna do what we can and collect as many of these as we can right now. Right. Syria is very pretty. Nothing. That's what it is. Under the arms north. Do, do, do. Okay, so it's going to be a bondish rock. There it goes. I was like, why hasn't this thing noticed me yet? Uh. 
Okay, so that one's over there. <sighs> I will lie. I am tempted to see if somebody could literally just fly me to all of these. But I'm also lazy. And don't want to, like, use time to contact people. Actually, before I continue, I need to go get my, like, night snack. Be right back. All right. Make sure we're pointing southeast, and here we go. Oh, wait, that's right. <laughs> there it is. Nine hundred yams north, huh? All right. So it's going to be up there somewhere. This map is also huge, Jesus. Um, while we go, see who we have on today. Hey, there's me. Good chunk of people online. The interesting question is where is this actually going to be?
Because I suspect it's way over there. Could be wrong. I am. Because now it's saying northwest. Ah. Okay. There it is. Next. Northeast. Continue. This is going to hurt. Ow. So it's probably up on that cliff edge. Or not, it's right there. Look at the little baby. Ugh. Ah, there it is. There we go. Next one. Northwest. So I take it I'm going to have to go through these little gates here.
Okay. Little jumping puzzle. Little jumping puzzle. Barely a jumping puzzle. Well, before I do that, I need to get this etherite for quick maneuverability. Let's check how we're doing. Okay, there are two left, so I should be able to get all of them here. Okay, so there's one to the southwest and there was one to the east. Yes. But before we go to the east, let's go southeast and grab this last etherite. That way we don't have to later. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Ruins of a uh, city. There it is. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Had a tickle all of a sudden. Didn't mean to cough like directly toward the microphone. I usually try and turn away, but that was that that came out of fucking nowhere. Four hundred yards. Okay, so it's up there. So there's gotta be a way to get up there.
Okay, I'm gonna try... I'm gonna try the underwater strat. See if there's a way up via underwater means. See, you never know. Ow. How do you do it? It's control squared. Uh, yes, okay. Just because it's a little faster. So there doesn't seem to be an underwater way. Which is fine. I'm going to look around, see if there's any way up there from where I currently am, but it, uh, my guess is there isn't. The only thing I have is there might be something there, but this is all cliff face, so it's probably a we get there during a story beat kind of situation. Go away, I don't care. Yeah, so it's up there. I don't see a way up there from here. Oh wait, it's just hiding in the rocks. I'm a doofus. All right, with that done, I can go back. We can work on that. My phone's gone off like six times in the last like 10 minutes.
I have to send a quick text. For Alfino and Alice, they say, let us be quick. It would be a shame to return only to find they have been made in to play one too many game. Now, the place we seek is the abandoned manor of a nobleman and a scholar. The bookman's shelves, it's called, after the fellow's vast collection of tomes. An agreeable habitat for our friend, I'm sure you'll agree. If we follow the path north, we should find the place. Come along. You know whether or not you're going to come back to an area based on uh, if you can find all the uh, ether currents right away. I'm sleepy, man. I don't get to do a ton outside of work anymore, so I try and take advantage of these chances to stream as often as possible. Ah. We're almost to the boy. Ugh. I was hoping to go for a long time, but I'm sadly stupid tired. Anchored. And here we are at long last. I give you Urianger's humble abode. Come, let us see if he's home. Can't you see Urianger again? And he's in his new outfit, I think. Uriange, are you in? Oh. There we go. Unto a world weary of heroes, a hero wends her way. The Exarch did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. We've been busy, Uberdanger. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minfilia. We will meet you outside. <laughs> Another one for you to imbue, if you'd be so kind. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Hmm. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest, it beginneth in earnest. The hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmore. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. As I drifted hither to the first, 
traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back. Ilm by painful Ilm at first, then Yalm by Yalm, and Malm by Malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived, for in so doing they did force the Empire's hand. Faced with defeat, the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile, Black Rose. Its potency defied all reckoning. Once released, the gas took on a life of its own, wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea, but in the provinces of the Empire besides. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, none were spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed, for spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword, the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist, and those souls brave and true who might have risen to restore order were no more, for the weapon spared not one, not even thee. That armor's different. An endless age of war, begotten by the blight of Black Rose, such is the legacy of the Eighth Umbral Calamity which I did behold. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world, discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. Dost thou recognize yonder chart? is a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. As the chart maketh plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. 
Astral, the active. Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the self-same forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Okay. Thus was I moved to inquire what names said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. Yet was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist, but it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces, while our own appears to focus on their effects, which makes one wonder. Have we had it backwards all this time? It is indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light, the power of stasis flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land. And according to Master Alfino, Black Rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings. Should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined, replete as it is with light. Ah. We would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands. A calamity. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilmeg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. It is all but certainly ensconced within Leergir, the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. To enter said stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. <laughs> Henceforth shall I accompany you, and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass. Nice to have you back, Ariage. <laughs> My friend, ere I speak of the task at hand, there is a question I would pose to thee. What thinkest thou of mine appearance? Come now, tis scarce the first time thou hast beheld me these fair features. Lest thou wonderest, I have taken up astrology. My present attire better suiteth the art. Though the night be lost, behind the shroud of blinding light, doubt not but that the stars shine still. I have chosen to avail myself of their guidance that I might navigate the sea of uncertainty that stretcheth before us. But enough about myself. Let us now speak of our task. As I did mention, if we are to enter Le uh, Leah Gear, we must needs gain the Pixies' cooperation. This is a simple matter of presenting unto them a suitable gift. I shall procure a sel uh, selections of viands and shall please that shall please their palates. Thancred, pray assist me with this endeavor. 
Meanwhile, Umbra, I bid thee obtain that which will please their eyes. In these parts, where there abideth a vile kin known for its beauteous wings, the hawker, I shall lend thee a receptacle with, within which thou mayest capture a weakened specimen. So I need to go kill a monster. Ether current. Oh, you're Orianche's friend, are you? You're not lend me a hand. You see, Orianche's home is drab and dull, and I have a mind to decorate it, make it bright and beautiful. If you were to help out, it would make it all the more special. First of all, we need some whirlweeds. Whirlweeds, pretty little plant that grows in the water. We usually trade for the fowl for it, but seeing as you can swim, you can harvest some for us. You should be able to find the weed in the lake where there's a sunken church. While you take care of this, I'll go and pick us lots and lots of beautiful flowers. Afterwards, let's meet back here for decorating. See you soon. Okay. Uh, let's go kill a monster. And by kill, I mean capture. Got him. Okay, so I need to go gather whirlweeds. Because I will fly as early as possible in this area. And down we go. So there was one. There should, should be a second around here. Oh, it's higher up. So it must be, yep. Grab that, there's a third. And there's the fourth. All right, nice. Wonderful. Grab this. All right, now we can go back to Uberdanker. All right. So now we can turn in that blue quest. And we can finish the MSQ mission I'm on. Things are going wonderfully. There you are. Did you manage to find the whirlweeds? Uh, yeah, I did, in fact. Oh ho, look at these lovelies. I'll enchant these at once. Make it so they can grow outside of the water, then plant them here and there. Meanwhile, I want you to decorate with the snug blooms. As to where they should go, ah, yes, the stairs. There's a dull spot that's ripe for some cheer. When you've finished, come and let me know. Good lord. Oh, 
hold on, Uberdanger. I gotta decorate your house a little bit. It's one. It's two. That's three. Today was a busy day. I mean, it's always busy when you come back from vacation. Like, there's... There's no doubt in my mind that every time you go on vacation, you come back and there's about three times as much work as you normally would have to do. Even though, like, you made sure to be careful. And then he'll want to stay here forever and ever. Thank you. Almost level 97. Uberdanger, thou art returned. Wert thou able to capture a hawker? Uh, yes. I'd already forgotten I'd done that. Ah, a truly magnificent set of wings. I shall treat them at once and make f uh, make fast their vibrant colors. Thancred too should return anon, upon which I shall ready all the items for presentation. Pray take thine, uh, take thine ease, meanwhile. I get to go hang out, get to relax a little bit. I don't get to do that very often, because I'm the only character in the world that does things. It's kind of the joke about MMOs, though, isn't it? Well, it's RPGs done. in general. The pixies shall be well pleased with these gifts. Great. Ah, lest I forget. What's that? Ooh, a piece of white etherite. White orosite. Orosite. Newly forged for thy use. Our mission being to thwart a rejoining, we will most assuredly cross paths with those who crave the contrary, our eternal enemies. Thus did I choose to abide in this ether rich land, the better to fashion a trap for the Asian's essence. So, Black Rose is powered up by Light Ether, which causes stagnation. May I come in now? You may indeed, assuming you've finished. Jesus, dude. I did as you asked. That's my girl. Thank you. I should probably explain. Though my body remained behind in the source, its limitations saw fit to accompany me. Which is to say, I cannot manipulate ether. Mm, okay, so he's still I the same. I took the gunblade for its defensive advantages. On account of my little impairment, I cannot imbue the ammunition myself. Luckily for me, Minfilia has quite a talent for it. Minfilia, once we set forth, we are not like to return for some while. If thou wouldst choose tomes to take with thee, let it be now. Really? May I? Of course, my dear. Yet have care thou dost not add overmuch to thy burden, lest I incur Thancred's ire. <laughs> God, they sassed him up so much. I love that he's, like, way sassier than he used to be. Hast thou spoken to her of thine encounter with the Minfilia of Eld? Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any. As you know, I freed young Minfilia from captivity in Yulmore some three years past. Not long after, the two of us journeyed to the south of Armoreng, to the edge of the empty, where the flood was halted. It was there that she awakened. 
the Minfilia of old. My Minfilia. Tell me, tell me, what must I do to bring you back? My dearest Thancred, as I am now, I am no different from an Asir. This child is but a vessel. One of many I have used that I might spread word of her enduring blessing and preserve the flame of hope. In my name, each has died, never having lived her own life. I have taken enough from these children. I will take no more. But what of your suffering, your sacrifice? This isn't fair. I will not stand for it. I cannot. There must be something we can do. Tell me. Should the day come when this child grows weary of fighting and wishes to cast it all aside, then shall I take up her burden. But should she wish instead to become the master of her own destiny, then shall I bequeath to her my all. Okay. Imbued with the strength that I reserve for rebirth, she may come to wield my powers as her own. And what of my wishes? What of Flamines? What of all the people who love and care for you and want nothing more than to see you again? It is not their decision to make. It is hers. This child's, this Minfilia's. You have ever watched over me, Thancred. Now I ask that you do the same for her. Protect her. Teach her. Stand by her as you stood by me. There is much and more she does not know. She needs a guide to show her the ways of the world, or she will never find her own path. When the time comes, you will find me here. Until that day. Minfilia, wait! What? What happened? And then she was gone. Minfilia, the girl, claims to have no recollection of any of it. I have told her many things, where we came from, what we fight for, but of that day, I have not spoken.
With the coming of another possessed of the blessing of light, the first hath begun to rise up in defiance of its fate. The question remaineth, however, who shall take up the flame of hope which Minfilia hath borne for so long? Whether we will it or no, the choice must soon be made. I'm sorry I took so long. It was so hard to choose. In the end, I settled on just the one. That is well. Now, if all is in order, let us set forth for Lida Loran. We weren't expecting you back all so soon. We had scarcely begun playing with the twins. That said, your gifts are truly wonderful. Let me tell you, the milk and honey and biscuits won't last a day, and the wings are the loveliest we've seen yet. You've done us great kindness, and it's fake custom to return the gesture. If you desire anything of us, you need but name it. Um... The key to the castle. So, what is it you desire? Rusty old coins like you mortals are wont to collect, perhaps? We are resolved to vanquish the Light Warden of this land. To that end, we desire entry into Lyagia. What a strange thing to wish for. You might as well ask for your death. But if that is what you want, who are we to argue? Very well. I shall speak with the others. You've clearly been busy, Irianger. Would you be so kind as to tell us what we've missed? Explaining! So that was the purpose of the gifts. Is there anything you can tell us about this light worn? Aye, my lady, but circumstances most tragic, the light warden of this land. Is our king and ruler Titania? It was not always so, of course. Our king fought the first light warden that threatened our home, you see. Fought it in one. But all the horrible light that came out went and corrupted them, turning them into a new Light Warden. Now they're only king in name, and all remains of the wise and just ruler that used to be. We had no choice but to seal them in the castle. The magic for breaking the seal was divided into four and woven each into a different relic, to be kept apart until the time was right. And this dress is one of them. It's been in our safekeeping for years and years, but we've decided to entrust it to you. Are you sure? Of course. Custom demands it. Though you're most certainly going to your deaths, we thought it 
we should at least let you try. That way we get to watch what happens. Of course, you can't break the seal unless you have the other relics too. The shell crown is with the Fout, and the stone scepter is with the Numo, and the crystal shoes are with the Amaro. Good luck finding them all. The facts thus, thus disclosed confirm my own understanding. Our quest lieth now before us. First, let us hide to the lake, there to claim the shell crown from the Falth. If we call to them uh, before the untouchable gate, they will answer. 